Today on The Garage Engineer, we're going to talk about one of my favorite cabinet parts, and that is the cabinet lid stay. A few videos ago, I did a product demonstration on the Sugatsune cabinet lid lift stay. What makes this product great is that you can incorporate this into your project, and then if you have a lid, like in a toy box, you can lift the lid, and then it slowly closes itself back down. So it's great for not pinching fingers, but also it keeps the lid from slamming down into the cabinet. This is also good for cabinets that doors lift upward also and it, and it holds it in position. However, in that last video, there was a lot of few comments of questions about using the lift. And that's what we want to address today. This is our gaming cabinet we built a few years ago. Uh, it has push button latches that opens up to store all of our games. But what we're going to be doing is adding a lid stay to our secret compartment. So our game cabinet has a secret compartment. If you lift up this lid, it has a space where you can put uh, smaller items as, and smaller game pieces. This cabinet is constructed of three quarter inch Baltic birch and stained to a, a red oak. So what we're going to be doing today is adding the lift stay to this corner right here. So to get started, we're going to add a little bit of blue tape so we can see our pencil lines a little better. One of the issues some people were having with the hinges is that they weren't getting clear instructions that they could read. Um, I, this last order I got, I got some pretty good instructions, so I will find that and put a link in the description below if you are missing yours. But we're going to go with our 90 degree opening angle here, and we'll just follow these measurements of where we need to place the uh, bracket. So from the back edge of the door, which is the back of the cabinet, we need to measure G, which is slightly under four inches. So that will be right about here. And so what I'll do is I'll take a measure inside measurement here, and that will get me three and a little under three inches. So from the back and side here, I will measure make a little mark that's right under three inches. Then we'll make our E mark, which is a little over two and a half inches, right here. That's our E mark. So from the top of the cabinet down, we're going to make two measurements. The first one's B. And B is a little over an inch and a quarter. Nine, it's one, one inch and nine thirty seconds. So we'll go just a little over an inch and a quarter. And that's right here. So we missed our tape just a little bit. And that needs to go over your E mark right here. So inch and a quarter right here. And we'll do a crosshair in just a second. And over your G mark, you need your D measurement, which is two and nine thirty seconds, which is a little over um, two and a quarter inches. So we'll bring that down here. So that's way down here. So now what we'll do is we will find out where they cross. We'll take our measurement here. That's where that crosses there. It crosses right there. And we're just redoing the measurements for E and G. And this down here is measurement D. And so this is where they cross. Where B and E crosses here, and G and D crosses down here. And that's where you're going to make your drill marks. So the measurement from the back of your door up to the center of your mounting plate will be 5 and 7 30 seconds, which is basically 5 inches and a little less than 5 and a quarter inches. So we'll make that mark here. And this is your A mark. Your A. So to get the measurement from the edge of the 
the door to the center here, it's 13 30 seconds of an inch plus whatever your overlay is to your uh, cabinet side. Now our cabinet side is three quarters of an inch and our door lines up evenly with the side of the uh, cabinet. So we're going to do three quarters of an inch plus 13 30 seconds of an inch and that will give us our center mark right here. So I'll add that up right now and then we'll make our measurement. So by adding 3 quarters of an inch for our width of our cabinet plus 13 30 seconds, that takes us to right around an inch and an eighth. Um, you can be more precise, if, uh, but that's close enough. So an inch and an eighth is right there. So we'll just need to remove our mark A. That's our inset measurement, and then our mark A will re recalculate. And that was at 5 and a little less than a quarter. So that will be right here, and that will be our inside measurement. So after we found our center mark, which was uh, from the outside of the door to our inset, and then from the bottom up, that gives the center of our bracket here. So now we just got to make a mark 5 eighths of an inch up, and that will be where our top screw hole will be. And then from there, we'll mount this, and then we'll just put in the other screw so we don't need to measure it. We just need to measure one. So from our center point, we will measure 5 eighths of an inch there. And then from the outside, we'll measure our inch and a quarter like we did before. And that will give our, our top point. And now we'll drill our pilot hole. Now the hinge comes with screws made for three quarters of an inch of material. Just make sure if you're using half inch plywood that you use shorter screws or this will go all the way through. Now what I like to do is just make sure, figure out the distance here. And we'll take our handy depth gauge here. Turn it around that way. And then we'll just measure it the same on the bottom here. And that will get us parallel. Perfect. And then we can pre-drill our hole to where it needs to be. So that was the hardest part of the installation is getting the measurements right. Now we just need to install the bracket and we can, we'll be done with the project. Now one comment I did have is some people were saying that the hinge was uh, slowly opening but then slamming shut. Now I think the reason for that was is this bracket uh, can be turned uh, left or right and I think the top right here was turned around because when I purchased this uh, this is how I got it it is not correct the the bracket should be mounted this way so that when it folds it folds out however the the attachment brackets on the wrong side so what we need to do is flip it over so to fix it we just take a, some our pliers we grab onto the bracket and we just flip it over to the other side. Now it's spring loaded so you gotta be real careful not to damage it. There you go, just like that. So now we're, it's on the other side. Since we're doing it on the uh, right side, the, uh, the, big bolt, the big bump on the hinge needs to be facing towards the cabinet here. So now we just put the nub into the top bracket, spin it so it gets into place. Then we take the bottom part of the bracket and attach it to the bottom bracket there. And then we use the set screw that came in the package too. It, it, it's the one without the point on it. And then you screw it into place. So normally if you're building a toy box, the depth of the cabinet is, isn't a problem. But since this is a, a shallow, uh, container that we were just making a uh, small shelf, a secret compartment, uh, we're having an issue with the bottom of the hinge hitting the bottom of the, uh, the sh contain shelf area. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of modification to the cabinet to fix that.
Well, as you can see, after a little modification, we did have to put a hole in here to uh, allow the uh, hinge to have enough swing to close down, but we got it to work. So those of you who are curious, if you want to know what the minimum distance the bottom of the cabinet needs to be to uh, accommodate this hinge, it is five and a half inches. Normally you don't have to deal with this in toy boxes and other larger cabinets, but for special cases like this, uh, you would need that depth. One interesting note about this hinge, it does have one adjustability uh, function on here that if your hinge is not straight up and down, uh, you're not getting your full amount of lid stay. So to fix that, you see there's a set screw right here. And if you just, so I've got an angle in mine right now that goes, bends outward, so I need to reduce the amount of the set screw. So I just turn it counterclockwise and it will reduce how much the hinge now you got your straight bend and that will secure it and, and um, secure the lid up straight up and down and if you have the other issue where it's bending inward then what you do is you just do counterclockwise and you go the other direction so right about there we're perfect all right now that we got everything installed let's give this lid a demonstration now if you notice it did come down and slam a little bit and that is the reason because these uh, hinges have a weight limit and this is a four foot cabinet uh, with four foot wide lid and it is a little bit heavy for this hinge um, but the good thing is is Sugatsune gives you a grid uh, chart on their instructions that tells based on the, uh, the depth of the lid and how much it weighs determines uh, how many hinges you need. On the chart, it's based on using two hinges. Uh, so if you only have one hinge, then you need to cut that number in half. So for this to work properly, uh, it should be, the, the action of the hinge should be a slow action like this. And I'll show a demonstration from our previous project, which it was a smaller uh, item, smaller door, so it, it closed properly. This is just a tad bit too heavy and would require two hinges. Uh, one on each side so in the future we could add another hinge but it does uh, you do get a it does slow down a little bit but it does, again it does need two hinges for this long uh, doorway if you're interested in purchasing this hinge for your project look in the video description below and we'll have a link to the product and all the other products that we use in this video and we'll also have a link to the other build video that we did earlier that we we're uh, reviewing the hinge itself. Remember the ABCs of making, always be creating. Till next time.